want to talk today a little bit about one of my favorite tools, a card scraper. Now, a recent issue of Woodsmith Magazine, one that accompanies this video, talks about how to sharpen a card scraper. But I want to talk to you about how I use a card scraper in my shop to get great results. The reason I like it so much is that it works a lot faster and gives me more consistent results than sandpaper. It's not a total replacement for it, as we'll see in just a little bit, but I like that I can work a lot quicker and more efficiently by using a card scraper. So I'm going to run through four different operations where I find a card scraper to be invaluable. The first is when I'm working with plywood. Now you know as well as I do just how thin the face veneer on plywood can be. And if you've ever tried to sand it, how quickly you can end up cutting right through that face veneer, much to your disappointment. So one of the things that I'll do to help smooth out a plywood panel is by using a card scraper and just dragging it across the surface. This easy step eliminates a lot of the fuzzies that you'll feel on, on the surface of the plywood and helps you pinpoint any other blemishes that you can zero in on by taking more aggressive cuts. Now when I'm working with plywood, I don't leave the cut edges exposed. I'll cover them with strips of hardwood. Now what I like to do is make those hardwood strips just a hair wider than the thickness of the plywood panel. That way, I don't have to be as precise when I'm gluing them on, but that means that they're going to be a little bit proud of the surface. To level them out, I'll turn to the scraper again. Here again, because I'm making controlled cuts in very thin amounts, I can confidently level that hardwood edging to the surface of the plywood without worrying about cutting through that veneer. Now you notice down here, things are looking pretty smooth and looks all right. Down here, it's looking a little hairy because I'm going against the grain. But with a card scraper, I can just turn the tool around and draw it toward me. And now I'm working with the grain and the result is going to be a lot smoother. One of the things I like about a card scraper, as you've seen already, is just how easy to, it is to use. I don't think it's as intimidating as trying to use a hand plane and I think you can get pretty good results. Now like I said, it's not a total replacement for sandpaper because the surface is a little bit more coarse feeling than you would get from a real sharp hand plane. So once I have everything leveled to where I like it, I'll come back with a sanding block with 150, 180 grit sandpaper and make a few passes just to clean up the surface. It really doesn't take that much. When I'm working with solid wood, a scraper is really invaluable. Now on this piece of walnut that I have, that's going to be a shelf and a small wall shelf that I'm making, I have these areas here where you see the grain makes circles. Whenever you see that, that's a good indication that the grain is going to change direction. So even though I've gone over the surface with a hand plane, what I'm left with is some areas and patches of tear out, pretty slight from where the hand plane left it. Now I could try and attack this with some sandpaper and try and level the whole surface, but the surface isn't as visually appealing. With a scraper, the advantage is that I can zero in on specific areas and work to remove that tear out going across the surface in different places. Now while you can zero in on an area, you don't want to linger there too long because what you'll be left with once the finish is applied is a visual depression. So after removing the tear out, I'll start to lengthen the strokes and make the surface wider and a little bit more level as I'm going along. Most of the time I don't need to worry about being like perfectly machinist level, but just smooth enough and level enough that you can't detect those, that tear out or the depression of where you were scraping. Just like before with the plywood, if you notice that the scraper isn't performing as well as you could, just turn it around 
and draw it toward you to see if that changes the results that you get. And you can judge by the types of shavings that you get how well you're doing. But there are two other ways that I want to show you how to use a scraper as well. The ability to target the cutting action of a card scraper plus its ability to make fine controlled cuts means that it's an ideal tool for working with curved surfaces. Now what we have here is the laminated rocker for a rocking chair project for the TV show. And in this area is some blade marks from the bandsaw when cutting those laminations. With a card scraper, I can attack those, those blade marks and remove them while still following along the curve of the rocker. So that way I can be confident that as I'm moving, I'm not creating any flat spots or facets that are gonna affect the look or the performance of the rocking chair, whether I'm working on this side or on the bottom face. Now when removing material with the, bl the blade marks here go straight across, but I don't wanna go straight across with my card scraper. Instead, I wanna go at an angle to ride across them so that I'm gonna level out the whole thing rather than have that scraper bump along into those furrows. Now, since you probably aren't making rocking chairs on a regular occasion, that's not the only kind of curved surface that I want to talk about. Here at the end of the rocking chair on the rocker, we cut a roundover profile. Again, the bandsaw is going to leave some blade marks, so I'm going to use a file to remove the coarse blade marks. Now that means that the file has left some fine striations and a pattern on there, and I need to remove that. And again, that's where the scraper comes into play. You can use just some wrist action here to follow along the curved profile of the rocker or whatever piece you're working on to remove the marks left by the file. Again, you can see how I'm guiding it with my fingers and then holding on to the workpiece to be able to get the control that I want to follow that profile. And when you're done, just like before, it always pays to finish things off by using some sandpaper. Final place that I want to talk about using a card scraper on is when you're working with end grain. Now I know that might sound a little bit weird, but I've actually found a way that can allow you to make smooth cuts with a scraper. Now whether you're using a miter saw or a table saw, what you can end up is these circular shaped blade marks on the end of a workpiece if your blade isn't perfectly sharp or tip really well suited for making those cuts. But I'm not going to use the card scraper in a typical way where you're making a high angle cut. Instead, I'm gonna hold the card scraper almost flat to the surface and make paring cuts across the end grain. The advantage here is that the card scraper cuts a lot faster than sandpaper would. And if you ever tried to sand end grain, you know how difficult it can be. One of the things you want to take care of, though, is when you get to the ends and edges of your piece, when you're cutting, you don't want those fibers to break away and tear off. So what I'll often do is make a slicing motion across the end to preserve that and back up the cut. And then you can also come at it from the opposite direction. and work back and forth. You'll see that the sheen of the end grain will change depending on which direction you're making the cut. So I can go back and forth
until those blade marks are gone. Now while I'm cutting, I'll put just a very slight flex into the scraper. be able to zero in on specific areas if I find that there's a deeper blade mark that I want to get rid of. Once again, when you're satisfied with the look of it, it's time to call in the sandpaper and even things out. In the end, I hope that you'll find new uses for your scraper if you have one. And if you don't have one, you might see just how versatile it is. Pick one up, learn to sharpen it, and put it to use in your shop. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video tip, be sure to subscribe to the Woodsmith Shop channel. Every week we're adding great woodworking tips and woodworking videos. All you have to do is hit the bell to be notified. Plus, you'll find project plans and downloads in the description below.